بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, my young friends, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته As we gather here today and as we speak, the attacks on the people of Gaza have begun once again after a one-week truce. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ The numbers are staggering so far killed at least 15,000, including at least 6,100 children, 6,100 children and 4,000 women, injured at least 36,000, with more than 75% being children and women, missing close to 7,000. Around 1,000 or so of the injured children have had to have amputations, losing legs or arms. In some cases, surgeries had to be performed without anesthesia. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the innocent martyred civilians of Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant relief and ease to the injured and afflicted. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, everyone is susceptible to one day becoming or being a person with a disability, like these thousand children, thousand or so children, who probably never imagined that they would be having a disability at this stage in their lives. So everyone is susceptible. If not today, then at some point in our lives. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and make it easy for all of us. We are having this discussion today because December 3rd is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities as declared by the UN in 1982. Dean Support Services is a local Canadian Muslim organization committed to offering support to persons with disabilities. And they have asked Imams Khatibs across Canada to participate in their campaign to get our community to understand disability from an Islamic perspective. Now, as we know, in many cultures, persons with disabilities are shunned, disregarded, ignored, or pushed to the fringes of society. But when we look at the guidance given by Allah and His Messenger وسلم, we find acceptance and support for persons with disabilities. For example, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam had a speech impediment right, for which, for which he, asked, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَحْلُ لُقْدَةً مِّن لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي But it didn't stop him from continuing his mission, his very important mission as a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiyallahu anhu He was blind from a young age, perhaps even from birth. Yet he was appointed as one of the three mu'addins in the city of Medina by the Prophet And this was a great honor. This was a great honor to be the person or from amongst the people, the few people, handpicked by the Prophet to call the people of Medina for salah. Another responsibility that the Prophet ﷺ placed upon him was that he put Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum anhu, the blind Sahabi, in charge of the city of Medina during his absence. And it is said that this was done more than 10 times. More than 10 times the Prophet ﷺ made him in charge of the city of Medina in his absence, including when the Prophet ﷺ had left Medina for the Fath for the opening of the city of Mecca, for the conquest of Mecca. There's also a man by the name of Julaybib, radiallahu anhu, who was 
you can say a, a virtual, virtually a social outcast in some ways due to his disabilities, which are not really described in, in specific terms. But it seems that he was of significantly short stature, and he may have also had some other differences. The Prophet ﷺ took special care of this young man. He even arranged marriage for him. Right? The Prophet ﷺ went out of his way to, to find a bride for him, and, um, and it was actually someone who was you know, very special. Uh, and many people you know, would have wanted to, to marry her, yet because of the suggestion of the Prophet ﷺ, she married Jubail Jalebi radiallahu anhu. He took part in a battle in which he fought heroically, mashallah. At the end of the battle, no one noticed that he was missing, except for the Prophet wasallam, who mourned his loss and said of Julaybib, هَذَا minni wa ana min, that he is of me and I am of him, to show his special care and affection for Julaybib. Atta ibn Abi Rabah, the famous early Muslim jurist, and hadith transmitter. He served as the mufti of Mecca in the 7th and 8th centuries. He was known to walk with a limp and to also have paralysis in part of his body. And he says, he narrates that Ibn Abbas عنهما, said to me that, Ala urikam min ahl al -jannah, that Shall I show you a woman of the people of paradise? And he said, Bala, yes. And Abdullah ibn Abbas عنهما, told him of a lady who had come to the Prophet وسلم, and she said that I get attacks of epilepsy and my body becomes uncovered so please, please make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and the Prophet وسلم, said to her in shi'ti sabarti wa lakil jannah wa in shi'ti da'utu Allah an yu'afiyak that if you wish be patient and you will enter Jannah, inshaAllah. And if you wish, I will invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure you. So the Prophet ﷺ didn't actually just answer her request right away, but he gave her a choice. He says, you can either bear patiently what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed for you, has, has, has written for you, and you can secure your Jannah that way. Meaning this illness that you have, this, you know, this uh, form of, uh, of, of this, this trial, this challenge that you have, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to either cure you or you can bear it with patience and have Jannah. So she said, I will remain patient. So she chose the first option that she bears what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed for Jannah. But then she added that I become, you know, but I become uncovered. So please make dua to Allah for me that I may not become uncovered. So the Prophet sallallahu then made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding that. But not for her to be cured because she wished to, be, to, to bear what Allah had willed so that she can have Jannah. Now an interesting point is that Dean Support Services notes that it is hard to find clear references to disability in early Islamic history. Why? Because people with disabilities were normally integrated and included in Muslim society. And it is also worth noting that the focus was not on people's uh, disabilities, but rather on their abilities, right? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a person a challenge, a struggle, a weakness of sorts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also compensates that in many cases with other strengths, right? with other skills in many cases. So the focus is on the abilities of the person, what they are able to do, right? As opposed to what they may not be able to do, right? And this requires a mindset shift. So what do we need to do? First of all, my brothers and sisters, we remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ar-rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-rahman, irhamu man fil ard, yarhamkum man fil sama. That those who show mercy to others, the Rahman, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, shows mercy to them. So show mercy to those upon the earth, and the one in the heavens will show mercy to you. Right? This is a beautiful teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which does not single out Muslims as only being recipients of our mercy, does not even uh, single out only human beings being the recipients of our mercy, but rather all of those who are upon the earth. Irhamu man fil ard is general, including the animals, any of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be merciful towards others, and in today's context, our brothers and sisters who are persons of disabilities, 
be merciful towards them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be merciful to you, inshaAllah. Therefore, as people of mercy, we must show love and care, concern. There are laws in place. So for example, there is the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which was tabled by the United Nations to make sure that people with disabilities can fully participate in community life with dignity and respect around the world. But we shouldn't need laws. We should not need laws and guidelines to force us to make our facilities and our programs, most importantly, our attitudes open and welcoming towards people. So I ask you to be careful not to stigmatize, stigmatize or sideline people who have disabilities you know, or treat them as outcasts or be afraid of them or be rude to them, especially children. Right? So let us be inclusive in all of our activities and planning. Right? And subhanAllah, there are many families you know, who have children with autism, for example. Right? And a lot of times they're really worried about taking their children to the masjid, or right? bringing those children, our children, to the masjid, right? or going to an event, because they're not always you know, able to control their, their behavior and their movements. Right? And sometimes you know, people will get upset. Like, you know, why is your child running around? You know, why are you not able, you, know, uh, you shouldn't be bringing your child, so on and so forth. Right? So let's be mindful and, and, and respectful and understand that there are a growing number of cases where, where people are in these situations. And the behavior is not because, you know, it's anyone's fault, right? But it is actually is a condition because of which the child is, is behaving like that. So this is just one example, right? And also making sure that our masjid is, is accessible, right? Simple things like where we put our shoes, right? How we put our shoes. So we leave the entrance, you know, clear and open, for someone who may be coming with, with a walker or a cane, for example. <coughs> Treating everyone with dignity and respect, you know, avoiding inappropriate or offensive names. Making sure that our brothers and sisters with disabilities <coughs> are not pitied or shunned away when they have an intellectual disability or a mental illness. Trying to make sure that sisters and brothers who are deaf or blind get the services that they need to learn about Islam, especially through our masajid. You know, building our facilities to be inclusive and accessible so that those using wheelchairs and crutches and canes are able to safely enter and move around within the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's one of the things that we're really focus on, focusing on with our upcoming new construction, inshallah, uh, for the new building and ensuring that there's actually no steps going into the building. Right? So it's flat access. Uh, no ramps, no steps, you know, so people can go straight in uh, and not have to worry about, um, about these things, you know, as much as possible. I want to make sure that families who are caring for children with severe disabilities find supportive environments at Muslim events and gatherings, right, so that we are welcoming, inclusive, kind, supportive but not in a, in a pitiful way, right? Not making it come across that, you know, we're, we're doing it as an act of charity, right? Because that's, that's hurtful too, right? But actually doing it genuinely because we are caring and we are welcoming and inclusive. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant relief and ease to all of those who face challenges and disabilities. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the patience and wisdom and understanding to support one another. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us and our loved ones well. Amin wa akhwadamah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.